The use of artillery has always been an important tool in modern warfare. During World War II, this was no exception. German military forces would come to use a variety of different artillery pieces. In this video, we look at the German heavy artillery of World War II. World War I would see the first widespread use of artillery by both Axis and Allied forces. Millions of shells would be fired in a theatre of war where static defences were common on both sides. This meant that artillery would play an important role on the battlefield. Opposing forces could stay in the same positions for months at a time allowing the enemy to train their artillery to deadly accuracy. World War II would see a different type of warfare. German blitzkrieg tactics utilised during the invasion of Poland in 1939 would see the use of a mechanised army moving across vast areas of land at incredible speeds. Much of this type of warfare didn't allow for the usual use of heavy artillery. Traditionally, artillery pieces would be moved into place prior to any forward movements. Artillery would then be fired at enemy strongpoints and troop concentrations. The attacking forces could then advance on the enemy, either during the artillery bombardment or immediately afterwards, while the defenders were still taking cover. But as indicated, the speed at which the German forces advanced in the early years of the war meant these tactics were not used regularly. Once the invasion of Russia took place, German heavy artillery would be used on a large scale. The vastness of the Russian countryside meant blitzkrieg tactics were not as successful. The 105mm howitzer would be a standardised artillery piece for the Wehrmacht. It was relatively easy to transport and could be manoeuvred into a firing position relatively quickly. If a specific battle dictated it, these artillery pieces would be dug into defendable positions. This meant that a battery of weapons would be surrounded by several access trenches. Further to that, machine gun and light weaponry would be positioned in order to provide cover for the soldiers firing the artillery. These soldiers would be too preoccupied with aiming and firing the artillery, so extra troops were provided to stop any enemy attacks on the position. Set further forward, usually towards the enemy or at a higher position than the guns themselves, an observation post would provide enemy positions and targets for the guns to fire at. Perhaps the most famous of all German artillery pieces was the 88mm. Originally designed to be an anti-aircraft weapon, the 88 was widely used as either an anti-tank gun or as an artillery piece. Its reliability and rate of fire meant that it became a favourite of German forces, as well as being feared amongst the Allies. Firing a variety of shells, it had the ability to fire on an Allied position with great accuracy. Some shells could be set to explode at certain intervals, rather than upon impact. This meant they could explode above an enemy position and rain shrapnel down upon them. Hitler had a great fascination with heavy artillery. It's widely speculated that his experiences in World War I helped him realise the impact the weapons can have on his enemies. This is perhaps why he became obsessed with creating the biggest artillery pieces he could, namely railguns, such as the Schwerwe Gustav. But ultimately, these exceptionally large calibre weapons were a failure, and the most success seen with artillery would likely come from guns like the 88mm. Allied soldiers would come to fear the use of German artillery, as the effectiveness of these weapons was not only due to the beautiful design and manufacturing by German engineers, but also the well-trained soldiers using the weapons themselves. What did you guys think of the use of German heavy artillery in World War II? 
Do you think these weapons were more effective than the Allied artillery? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to expand your knowledge and join the growing Premier History community.